Hey everybody, I'm sorry, I'm sober now, I just left rehab. I've been partying with the gang too much, and when I say partying, I don't mean going out for a burger, having a couple drinks, then blacking out at the strip club. I'm talking squid game type parties, like rolling dice with the homies, trying to hit lucky, winning mini games, otherwise it's straight up death and you don't get any coins. Jumping over fire, playing tug of war to see whoever can toss the opposing team off a cliff, dodging spikes and all that shit, guessing how many goombas are walking around, cruising around with DK and Wario, punching things. I'm talking serious party, like, I'm talking Super Mario Party Superstars. Woohoo! On the Nintendo Switch, not on Xbox, just Nintendo. Don't know if I needed to clarify that, but uh, moving on with the review. I haven't played a proper Mario Party game, which goes back to form from the Nintendo 64 days. And no, Super Mario Party doesn't count on the Nintendo Switch. While I found the mini games fun in that game, the board games were cheap and lazy and I expect more from Nintendo so you could imagine that I was very curious jumping into this one. But when I first saw the reveal trailer and I realized that they are bringing back some of my favorite boards from the OG classic Mario Party games along with every mini games from basically all 11, all 11 games or so and you can see why I'm excited to talk about this game and let you know if it's worth your time and your investment. The gameplay is pretty simple. Basically, you choose your favorite party animal and go get wrecked. I mean, uh, pick how many turns you want to play for uh, the board that you choose or pick. And then from there, the turn order is chosen by the character player who scores the highest number. Highest being first, lowest being last. Todette shows you where the star is on the map and from there on out, you hit dice, get your money stolen by Koopa Jews, Try not to land on the Bowser spot and try to win as many mini games as possible in order to win coins and eventually have enough to win that star or purchase it I should say. Of course you can turn on handicap which will reward and give less skilled players a chance at winning a star or two by the last 5 turns or at the end of the game. I know this all seems simple but players who are strategic and have a good understanding of the map layout for the board games will be an advantage here. You will also be able to steal other players stars or coins thanks to booze and buying items that will help you on the next turn or an item that can help you reach a star space on the on the next turn or switch the stars location on the map thus throwing other players off. There's a lot going on here. I didn't even mention the stage hazards on the board maps like Bowser's power beam cannon which attacks other players sapping their coins and ruining their next turn or ruining a perfect chance to snatch a star. While moving around on the board games, when your number ends you will stop and you'll land on either a blue or red or green colored space. The blue ones are normal and you get awarded a couple coins while the red ones are bad and steal three, three coins away as well leaving you at a disadvantage when the next mini game starts. As you will be forced to play off against all of the other players but sometimes it's the other players that are at a disadvantage depending on which mini game it is usually. The green spaces are usually lucky spaces in which you get a chance to win items or coins or having the next star be available at a discounted price but the green space can either turn you blue or red at the end of the turn so it's always a gamble. A lot of the board games they chose for this game are pretty outstanding and I honestly believe they made a very wise decision here. But I have to admit. I I wish they added more board games here. There is no excuses for the lack of missing board games in this game. I think at least two more or three more board games would have been much appreciated especially for a long time Mario Party fan. Why not include some board games from the other games in the series? Especially since this game is being marketed as a special anniversary game for the Mario Party series and trying to add them all into one game. This could have been on the level of Super Smash Bros, but it feels like Nintendo just didn't want to go all out. That's what it feels like to me at least, but that's the only flaw that hindered my experience with this game as I did expect to play on more board games. And just to clarify, by board games I mean this overall stages in this game. But the board games that we do get all look wonderful, from Peach's Birthday Cake to Woody Woods where the directions in which you travel on the board will be changed after each turn, forcing you to really think hard and have a good estimate as to where you are trying to go. The other stages are all wonderful too. I'm glad they brought Horror Land back for Mario Party 2 and Yoshi's Tropical Island is a very good tutorial level and has some awesome chill vibes. A new addition to Mario Party Superstars which I think is fantastic is that now you can communicate to other players using stickers which show off a bunch of hilarious character artwork 
and reactions and using them during gameplay made me laugh out loud sometimes and it's a good way to connect with others without the option of chatting and it adds a lot of personality to each match and always kept things hilarious and fresh. The game runs pretty smoothly and I'm surprised that the online play is pretty consistent here and that's something I have to mention. Playing Mario Party online is a godsend and it's the only way to play for me. I love it. There was times where the frame rate took a hit or someone's Wi-Fi wasn't up to speed which sucked but I would say 90% of the time I had no problems and I hope I won't in the near future but online mode works great for the most part. It's funny when you get a chance to ruin someone's star run or beat them in that mini game due to, due to luck or outsmarting the other player with strategy during mini games but yeah I loved online mode and that's just scratching the surface. Every day you can participate in online daily challenges as well and play other modes like who can win the most mini games among other challenges. There's a lot of variety here to keep players coming back for more. Trust me. One of the reasons to keep playing is that now in a Mario Party game, you can level up like you're playing a Dragon Quest RPG. Hell yeah. Screw you level 99 Rosalina. Yeah, I actually beat a level 99 Rosalina player in normal play. I had the footage. It was a long match. I overcame and I won but I never played Mario Party so hard in my life like that. I lost the footage maybe I deleted it by accident but that was a super cool moment and I gained a lot of levels after that match so that's neat. Too bad I can't do that in real life. As you gain levels you also gain coins and unlock new rewards and Toad's shop where you can purchase additional stickers and soundtracks and character encyclopedias. And while I like this feature, I wish we had some more cosmetic rewards to buy like additional boards or character skins like where each character can put on a different outfit like in Mario Party 2. I'm just saying if Mario Party 2 can do it then so can superstars. I noticed that you can buy a different remix of the soundtracks as well that plays on each board and while it's nice that we have the option to choose from new or classic, I wish they could have added these awesome brand new remix tracks while playing on the board games that the remix soundtrack belongs to. That would have been cool. Then we got Kami Koopa's Data House. This is where you can edit your player card information and view character encyclopedia and listen to soundtracks. I like how you can view every Mario Party game in the encyclopedia files, but I think they half-assed it here. Like, why just show me a picture of the game? Why not go into detail more? Tell me about what each game in the series brought to the table and what was so interesting about them for the time. And how many copies have been sold worldwide? Give me a reason to look at this encyclopedia. Even the character descriptions, I didn't notice any fun quizzes or trivia or fun facts about the games that these characters are from or the series that they represent. Usually it's just like, hey, this is Princess Peach. She has a kind heart. Or hey, this is Luigi. He's afraid of ghosts. Like... Okay, what a missed opportunity here. Then there's Shy Guy's Option House where you can adjust the game setting among other things and the Friend House which lets you connect and play with your friends and last but not least you can hop on a boat to mount mini games where you can play and enjoy each mini games and other variety of online or offline modes. I've been saving this one for last. It's time to talk about the mini games. I forgot most of the mini games from the older games. I haven't played the GameCube games or the Nintendo 64 games in a long time. So the mini games is what I appreciated most about this game. I love mostly every mini game that is here and I was surprised by the innovation and ideas that they use in order to keep each mini game feeling fresh. It's really surprising that from each new title the mini games never seem to get old or stale but instead run on innovative ideas and gameplay challenges and after 11 games that's saying a lot so credit is due here. I loved each of these mini games and I'm glad that most of my favorites are here like Jump Rope or Tug of War but be careful when playing that one. I remember I got a blister one time from rotating my N64 controller analog stick too hard just to win that one. Shy Guy says where he chooses which color flag he wants to hold up and you have to follow lead but, but he can easily switch it up last second or confuse the player so be careful. They're all super fun here. I don't want to ruin any of it but trust me when I say the mini game selection is fire. fire. I also love how when playing on a board game the last 5 turns everything just heats up like when you land on a blue node you get like extra 5 or 6 coins. If you land on a red one you lose 6 coins. I'm pretty sure it's 6 I can't remember. Old age I guess. Gotta stop partying with the gang. Okay that last one was a lie. Oh yeah and I totally almost forgot. 
during the last five turns when everything heats up if you land on the same space as another player then you basically have to verse each other and victory equals more coins so that was really fun as well and kept me on the edge of my seat level 99 rosalina damn it screw you you think i shoot dice and play mini games for fun to sum it all up if you haven't played any of the mario party games since the nintendo 64 days and you wish for the old style of mario partying well i have good news and if you want to be rewarded for playing strategically while still relying on luck and just overall want to have an amazing time with friends or family whenever you all hang out then mario party superstars is definitely worth the investment and i even think this makes for an amazing holiday gift or birthday party gift while there's so much more to be wanted here like having more board games to play on some more character skins add in some more playable characters that are hugely missing in this game i'm just glad that they put donkey kong in here yes and yeah the encyclopedia could definitely be filled out with some more detail still what we have is very good but i do have to ask nintendo if they are holding back just a little bit i think more effort could have definitely been put into this game overall but still, it's very fun to play, especially with the much needed online features. And if you're okay with that, then that's all that matters. You get what you get. I'm giving Mario Party Superstars a 7.8 out of 10. It's a good effort and worth the investment. If only it had some more boards and characters and some more additional futures, then this would have definitely been an 8. If this seems like your kind of way to party with friends and have some fun, then this is for you. I can easily recommend this one without a doubt. But if you still have the old school Nintendo 64 games, yeah, I'm the type that's probably just gonna stick with Mario Party 3 still to this day. It's just what I do, I play Mario Party 3 a lot, so yeah, even Mario Party 2, so. But still, I'm gonna be playing this one as well, so yeah. Thanks for watching everybody, especially if you made it to the end of this video. I really appreciate your support and thanks. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe as well for more video gaming content from my channel. Uh, basically, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I just wanted to share my thoughts on uh, Mario Party Superstars. And you guys have a great day and enjoy the rest of your week. See you guys on the next episode of Rogue Spirit Reviews. Peace out.